Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Benny Resendez, a co-producer here for the Republican Party of Bear County, and today we have Eugenio Rodriguez, who is a, the government liaison for the Republican Party of Bear County. Eugenio, thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. So, um, can you please explain to the folks who are watching this video what what is that title, government liaison? Like, what do you do with that title? Well, um, when, I was first, when I was first given this title, I was told to go ahead and define it by my own. So, the first thing that came to mind is, okay, I'll do what I used to do is to talk to politicians and stuff. But then I said, government liaison. But what is government? We the people is government. So it kind of turned into more of a how trying to communicate with the people out there that is impacted by government. So then from there, once you get the problems they have or the questions they have, I can then transfer that to the government officials. But then again, you have to know what each layer of government is responsible for. Because sometimes people want you to do something that's actually local or city, but they want you to throw it to a congressman. For example, let's say there's a lot of dogs loose. So they say, well, tell my congressman. Well, you know, you tell your city officials first. You know, so um, there's a lot of confusion how government works. Sometimes we take it for granted. Even I take it for granted. Um, the other thing is that what I try to do is tell uh, tell people that government starts local. Let's say the most local would be like a school district, and then it moves on to a uh, municipality. And then it moves on to counties, but then there's regional, such as the Edwards Aquifer Authority, and um, then there's got uh, with the state and federal. So there's layers. There's also San Antonio River Authority. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything going on with the river, uh, with their uh, creek systems, you really want to get the San Antonio River Authority involved. And they also work in conjunction with the city of San Antonio. So when some of the complaints or concerns I get, like from the West Side and other parts is when they did the uh, Creeks Restoration Projects. People were seeing what is it going to do, what's going to happen. And by chance I had been involved in that from the beginning. And quite frankly, from that, in that, in that case, uh, my first concern was uh, water quality and environmental safety. Because it turns out that a lot of folks don't know, but since uh, watersheds or creeks are the lowest points to any area, um, that's where they put most of the water lines, I mean water lines, uh, sewer lines, because they flow down. So it turns out that I found that, that a lot of sewer lines are in the creek systems themselves. And sometimes wow. they overflow. So for me, that was very serious. Then I said, well, why is it that happens? I came across that it's something so simple that, and by chance I got to see it. Um, Saws so went to my neighborhood. They took what's called a grease monster because of the sewer lines were blocking up. So they got there and they said, Mr. Hughes, you, you said that you needed us. Uh, could you please come over and tell us where you saw one of those um, uh, manhole covers overflow? So I went and by chance the gentleman that removed the cover got another deal, like a crowbar. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you remove that heavy cover or lid and then right beneath it looks like a frying pan, which is a plug. Well, what happened is he gets in this thing and he poked wow. on it. So then I said, ah, that's what's happening. They're poking that mm -hmm. secondary uh, lid that keeps rainwater from going in. But if you poke it, you create holes. So every time it rains, the sewer system is on its own. Yeah. Well, it overflows. So, so little details like that. But yeah, so I, I can tell from that that like you're very involved in the community here in Bear County. You're all over the place where it's like politicians. Too. Or with local citizens in Bear yes. County. So, are there any? We were talking that you were looking for volunteers to recruit volunteers for the upcoming elections. Um, what issues are you most focused on that you want people to be aware of in Bear County? Well, there's several issues. Uh, there was one issue that concerned me back in 2002, 2004, and it was regarding voting. Now, it wasn't necessarily voting, but it was a system itself. And then at that time, the citizens of San Antonio, we gathered over 107,000 signatures. So there was a petition that was to be given to the city of San Antonio. But then the city of San Antonio at the time requested that we all put our UID numbers, which mm -hmm. is their own registration card. So we did that. 
Well, all of a sudden, I was at city council for the first count, and they uh, had dismissed a bunch of signatures. Wow. Just like that, boom, over 30,000 or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of signatures. So I was like, well, what in the heck happened? In any case, after that count, we still we were given a little bit more time to uh, compensate for what was taken away. Well, I walk outside from City Hall, go to the little plaza that was there, and uh, lo and behold, the lady says, I wanted to sign, but I think I can. I said, no, yes, you can sign. Well, at that moment, she pulls her card out, gives it to me. So I start copying, because you can copy whatever yeah. is on the card, and then she got to sign it. But, um, but then she says her birth date the correct way, her correct birth date, but the card said 0101 and her birth year. So I said, excuse me, what is your birthday? She was, oh, I've been trying to fix it and it didn't work. Well, with that little mistake that the that the correct birthday wasn't on the card, mm -hmm. whoever put their real birthday when they signed at the time, the petition, it was voided because it didn't match. Wow. So that was a clerical error that happened, and it happened because at the time the voting uh, elections department had uh, speeded up the process of, put, of using a new machine so instead of putting everybody's correct birthday, they said, you know what, just punch in 0101. So it was kind of like a one in a billion chance that I saw that. So now if you look at your registration card, it doesn't even have your birth date, nor your, uh, mm -hmm. nor what is the date or the month, and before it did, and that really narrows it down, because let's say that there's two, like junior and senior, so exactly, you don't know. You know there's going to be have, confusion everywhere. Yeah. So the cards changed to the point where it's just a year. So I don't think the system was really purged correctly mm -hmm. or corrected, but still, that's what we have right now. So, are there any upcoming events that you want the public, especially Republicans of Bear County, to be aware of that you would like for them to attend? Yes. At this time, uh, the elections are coming up, and uh, people need to be aware that if they did not vote in the past primary, they can vote at this time. And uh, of course, right now, you have to decide you're gonna vote Democrat or Republican. And what they have to do is be aware that if they didn't vote, they can still go and vote for the primaries. And if they did vote, they need to make sure that they request, or they're already signed up as having voted either Democrat or Republican. So they need to be aware of that. And uh, now, things have changed in which I think you can vote anywhere, from what, the, from what I noticed. Depends on if they change things mm -hmm. again, but uh, it looks like you can vote anywhere. But uh, be aware of that. Okay, so, awesome. And, and there's a lot of elections going on from Congress on down. Yeah, senators. we've been me and Carlos. We've been running into many different candidates from to, from judges to Congress. So it's all it's all over the place right here in Bear County with Republicans. So on my last question. For a volunteer, for someone who's a Republican, whether it's 18 to 35 to 50, who wants to get involved but isn't sure where to go to get the info, where do you recommend them to come? Do you recommend them to come to you? Do you recommend them to come to the HQ? Like, how would, should they get involved? I would recommend they go to, to the HQ, first of all, and that way they can be directed, hopefully, um, not hopefully, but they will be directed maybe to an individual candidate so they can help the candidate out directly. Because lock walkers um, are needed for, for candidacies. Um, so whatever help people can do, even though they can do office work for the, for the headquarters would be awesome. Now in my case, in my position, unfortunately with COVID coming in, it threw a curveball, a big curveball at me. From my case as a liaison, what I was hoping to do was create like a little committee within a committee and the committee would hopefully um, help the cons or the citizens with uh, municipal concerns and on up, because each concern is very serious, and we could hopefully um, uh, address them in that fashion. So that was my that was my dream to do. Unfortunately, COVID got in the way. I wasn't really able to do it the way I really dreamed about it. Mm -hmm. But I'm still trying. So I'm out there. Yeah. Um, uh, the other one is that yes come to the headquarters, and what's good about that, it's a, like a one-stop center. They they have communication with all the candidates, and that way they can do. With me, it's more of an issue thing. Like for example, right now we have the old Highway 90 issue going on. Mm -hmm. um, we have we have been tackling it for several years now, because uh, the city created, 
they created a wall in which you have to wait five years before anything can be done, which was really very wrong for the community. Mm -hmm. But in any case, uh, we're still at it. Um, we're still trying to correct whatever we see is um, done wrong. Well, some things can easily be corrected, so it's not. It's, it's like yeah. Just call three one one or call two one one. They know what your problem is. I tell them to call three one one, and they'll help you with, um, with city stuff. Call two one one, and that's where social stuff, social services, and other other uh, other entities that can help people. So it's very important. Those two numbers are very important. Two one one and three one one. I mean, yes. So, and nine one one of course is emergency. But uh, it's now. Picture. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, that's what I tell folks. Go ahead and use those numbers. They're extraordinarily, I mean, they're really great. Um, but sometimes people don't even know that. Mm -hmm. Because there's, uh, just by chance, I mean, they just don't know. So once, if they can't find a solution there, then you move up and Got you try it. to get answers from other folks. And well, uh, that's how it works. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Eugenio, um, for being here, taking the time out of your busy schedule to come talk to us. You brought up important issues that a lot of people aren't aware of and you telling people how to get involved so that's the thing you really need right now yes now since you say important issue now my, um, remember we have cps saws all these utilities mm -hmm. um, there's things that happened in the past that by chance i sat there and i said no to but now we're paying for it wow okay. um, there's some health issues that occurred many years ago and by chance i figured out how they happened unfortunately they're still in the back burner. Um, there's so many issues, so little time, and what I would like, or my dream was, to hopefully get a group of people that are interested in research or have a background in utilities, and that way we could have uh, sources that know about those things directly, because there's experts for everything. And it would be awesome if we could get a, a round table just for that, and by addressing that, we could address the taxes. Everything is a tax. Mm -hmm. You pay a bill that's a tax upon the upon the constituents. So if we can reduce the amount of money that's being spent here and there, Absolutely. it adds up. Yeah, and, you're right. You know, but so, thank you for well, having me. Yeah, that's thank you, Eugenio Rodriguez. Ultra, ultra, I want to speak Spanish now. I don't know why. It's but todo. Then, si es todo, no? But uh, thank you guys so much. Please leave click on the like button, and we'll see you on the next video. See you guys. Thank you. Bye bye.